A Buddha is a being who is free from samsara completely, fears of samsara and ever falling back. So that is a title or a definition of that type of being. It doesn't refer to one. Example, Prime Minister doesn't only refer to um, His Excellency, Mr. Badawi. It refers to many Prime Ministers throughout the world. So like that, when you say Buddha, it doesn't only refer to Shakyamuni, it also refers to other beings who has reached that enlightened state. So if you believe that other beings cannot reach that enlightened state, you would not take refuge in the Buddha because that means you believe the Buddha's teachings cannot bring you to that state, therefore he is not a Buddha. So you have to establish first whether you believe in the Buddha or not, by logic and by reasoning and by study. Only by reason, logic, and study will you be able to establish what a Buddha is, a definition, and whether you can believe based on study. If you don't study simply to have someone describe to you the nature of a Buddha, you will not believe. So that takes years. A. B. Since a Buddha's teachings can bring you to full enlightenment and you can become a Buddha, it is impossible to think that there is only one Buddha. Two. Since other beings can practice the Holy Dharma and become liberated and become a Buddha, Therefore, there can be many, many Buddhas because not everybody in samsara is like me. Three, other enlightened beings have identified other Buddhas. New Buddhas that arise in our lifetime, I don't know about because there's no one here who can actually identify. But other Buddhas have been identified by Shakyamuni himself that are Buddhas. Example, Shakyamuni himself is a fully enlightened being and his eight great disciples, such as the eight Bodhisattvas, Avalokiteshvara, Kuan Yin, Manjushri, Maitreya, Samanda Bhadra, um, Vajrapani, etc., etc. Those are established. So those are correct objects of offerings. At the same time, those eight bodhisattvas and Shakyamuni himself have many various types of emanations and forms that appear to sentient beings throughout the universe according to their aptitude and their attitude and their karmic affinity. So those emanations are also correct objects for us to take refuge in and that they are Buddhas. Example, Buddha Shakyamuni's disciple is Manjushri. Manjushri can, is an object of offering. He is a fully enlightened being. He has studied. He has mastered. He is recognized by Buddha as an enlightened being. Therefore, when Manjushri emanates someone like Yamataka, we can also take refuge in Yamataka. And when Yamataka emanates someone like Kalarupa, we can also worship Kalarupa. So the Buddha has disciples that are enlightened. Those disciples can also emanate out. Below the Buddhas, below the disciples, you have, for example, those are called the Yidams, the emanations of these great bodhisattvas. Then below that, you can have the 35 confessional Buddhas. Below that, you can have the solitary realizers. Below that, you can have the Pratakaya Buddhas. Below that, you can have the Shravakas, the hearers. Below that, you can have the Arhats. Arhats are Lohans. Below that, you can have the Dakas and Dakinis, who are mystical beings who have listened to the Buddha's teachings become enlightened. Then below that, you have the enlightened Dharma protectors. Above that and within that, you can take refuge. Outside of that, you cannot. Why? It's not a rule. It is logic. You don't take refuge in anything that is not a Buddha. The point is this. The Buddhas, their disciples, and their emanations. So within our Buddhist world, we know that they emanate as these forms. But we also do not disinclude that they can, inform, they can emanate in other planets, universes, with one eyes, green skin, two foot tall, looking like you know, um, ETs, they can emanate everywhere according to those beings. So if in the East, they have to emanate with little small eyes and black hair, and that benefits us, they will emanate like that. If in the West, they have to emanate as a Jew, strapped onto a cross and beaten, and it benefits them, it will be that. So what we need to be concerned about is not to find the defining line, who is enlightened, who is not, but to stick to who we know are, but also not to criticize who we don't know are or not. So in the Buddhist perspective, Jesus Christ is considered a bodhisattva by the virtue of his actions. But he doesn't necessarily have to be put into the pantheon of Buddhas, but it doesn't mean he's not included. Because if we were to include everything into the pantheon of Buddhas, we would have to have Buddha knowledge and omniscience to perceive all Buddhas in the universe, and that would be impossible. So Buddhists doesn't ever disinclude enlightened beings manifesting outside of Buddhism, because that would be totally illogical. Totally. How can Buddhas only benefit Buddhists? Illogical. Buddhas benefit everyone, but according to their aptitude, according to their culture, their time, their learning, and what they need. So at certain times, Buddha will emanate and say, there is no next life. There's only one life. For those type of beings at that level, that would help them at that time. So they follow that way 
to go onto the spiritual progress. For some people who can think more, it's not just next life. It's not just when you die, it's over. There is a next life. You need to take responsibility. So the doctrine of karma helps. So the Buddhas will emanate everywhere and speak almost directly opposite, conflicting in order to benefit those beings. But for them to benefit, it is according to that being and that time and that culture's aptitude, not the Buddha's differences. Do you understand? So is Buddha, is Buddha Jesus an object to make offerings to? That's correct. Of course he is. You look at the result. Look at Mother Teresa. So if everybody following Jesus Christ was monsters, and they're, they're heretics, and they kill people, then we say, uh-oh, something's wrong there. Every single person. But if within Jesus Christ's followers, if you have wonderful people and ugly people, because they call themselves Christians, it doesn't mean that Jesus is wrong. Similarly, within Buddhism, you have many Buddhists who are horrible. Horrible. But they call themselves Buddhists. It doesn't reflect Buddha. It reflects themselves and being hypocritical in their practice. So if someone calls themselves a Buddhist, and they steal, they sleep around, and they cheat on their, uh, you know, their partners, they're not a Buddhist. People will look at them and say, Buddhism is bad. People on that level will look at that. People on higher level will know they don't practice. So to sum it up very simply, for, for any of us to think that the Buddha mind cannot emanate according to the other's aptitude, you are putting a limitation on the Buddha's abilities, and therefore he cannot be a Buddha. A Buddha is one that's cleared all obscurations. There is nothing in samsara, nothing that is, cannot be seen by a Buddha. Our arhat still has limits where he cannot see fully. So it's another step towards Buddhahood. But it's not Buddha yet. But they are still out of samsara. They're high enough that they cannot be controlled by their karma to take rebirth into samsara. Why? They still have a subtle level of independently holding onto the eye. 